Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This video series will be dedicated to the timers in STM32. We will cover all different kind of functions that the timers can be used for. Starting today, we will see how to use the pulse width modulation. This video will cover the PWM output, how to generate the PWM signal, how to change the duty cycle or frequency, and how to use DMA with PWM. So let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE. I am using F103C8 MCU. Give some name to the project, and click Finish. First thing we are going to do is set the clocks. This part seems to be confusing for few people, so pay attention. I am selecting the HSE, High Speed External Crystal to provide the clock. Don't randomly use the values I use in the videos. You need to know the crystal frequency for your board. For example, you can see in this Nucleo board, here is the crystal, with 8 MHz frequency. In some Nucleo boards, this one is not present, but there is another one, shared between the ST-Link and the MCU. You can use this one also. Here is another board, which is comparatively newer, and this one have the 24 MHz crystal on board. There is another one right beside it, but it's 32 kHz, and it's used for the real-time clock operations. So HSE in this particular board is 24 MHz. Input the proper crystal value here. Now choose the PLL source as HSE. Choose the PCLK, and type in the frequency you want. Hit enter, and the clocks will be configured automatically. That's it about the clock configuration. Now let's do the rest of the setup. Select the serial wire debug. I am going to use the timer one for the PWM. There are four channels here, and since I only need one signal, I am choosing only channel one. You can see the pin PA8 got selected as the timer one channel one. This will be our pin for the PWM output signal. Select the clock source as the internal clock. Now we need to configure the timer. Here are three formulas that you are going to need for the PWM. First we need to set the proper timer clock, and that can be done with Prescaler. Then the frequency can be set using the timer clock, and the auto reload register. The width of the signal can be varied using the capture compare register, and the auto reload register. Let's start with the timer clock, and the prescaler. First of all we need to know, where the respective timer is connected to. This information is provided in the datasheet of your MCU. Here is the clock diagram for F103, and it describes the connection between the peripherals and the buses. Here we are looking for the timer 1, and you can see that it is connected to the APB2. Now we will check the clock setup we did, and here you can see the APB2 timer clock is running at 72 MHz. Remember one thing, since we are using timer, we are concerned about the timer clock, not the peripheral clock. Since the timer 1 is connected to APB2, the timer 1 clock is also 72 MHz right now. So we need to bring this clock down to our workable range. And that's where the prescaler comes in. Timer clock is equal to, ABP timer clock divided by the prescaler. APB timer clock is at 72 MHz, so if we use the prescaler of 72, the timer clock would come down to 1 MHz. The prescaler value must be one less than the actual value. This is explained in the prescaler register. As you can see, this one here gets added with the value we input, so make sure the value should be one less than the desired value. 
So if you keep the prescaler 0, it would mean the actual prescaler is 1. Now our timer clock is at 1 MHz. Remember that frequency is equal to timer clock divided by auto reload value. So if I choose the auto reload value of 100, the frequency will be 10,000 Hz. The value for the AR should also be one less than the actual value. These registers are set up in this way, and that's how we should use them. So our timer clock is running at 1 MHz, and using the auto reload of 100 will bring the frequency to 10 kHz. That's all we need to set up here, and the rest we will take care in the code. Let's enable the DMA also. Here we are going to send the data to the PWM, so the direction will be memory to peripheral. Keep the DMA mode normal, so that we can control when to send the data. And the data width must be half word, as we will be sending 16-bit values. That's all the setup we need. Let's click save to generate the project. We will start with the simple PWM signal. Load the value in capture compare register. I am using CCR1, because I have selected channel 1. If you are using any other channel, use the respective CCR register. I will explain this 50 in a while. And start the timer in PWM mode. Let's build and run this for now. Alright let's see the output. You can see the frequency is 10 kHz, and the duty is 50%. Let's see some calculations. The frequency is equal to 10 kHz. And we know that the duty is equal to CCR divided by the auto reload value. I have used the CCR of 50, and the auto reload is 100, so the duty percentage is 50%. Let me explain you how this works. The timer clock is set at 1 MHz. So each count in the counter will take 1 microsecond. The auto reload is set at 100, so the total counts the counter can count are 100. After 100, the counter will overflow, and start from zero again. Also remember that we have set the capture compare value to 50. So the pulse will remain high, until the counter reach this value 50. Once the counter hit this value, the pulse will go low for rest of the counts. So this make the pulse high for 50 microseconds, and low for 50 microseconds. Now let's change the CCR to 30. The duty cycle is 30% now. Also note that the pulse is high for 30 microseconds, and the low for 70. This is because the capture compare value is set to 30. Let's change the auto reload period to 10. Also change the CCR to 4. Now our frequency is 1 MHz by 10, that is 100 kHz and duty cycle will be 40%. Let's test it. You see the frequency is around 100 kHz, and the duty is 40%. So this is how we send the PWM signal. Now we will use the DMA with the PWM. Let's define an array to hold 10 values, that we are going to send to PWM. Now we will set the values. The values we are going to send, are for the CCR register. These values are the duty cycles, 
and they will change with every pulse. Start the timer in the PWM and DMA. The data is the PWM data, and the length is 10. Also I am changing this back to 100, as I have used the CCR of 10 to 100. Let's run this. Here we have the pulse with different widths. It starts with 10% duty, and goes all the way to 100% duty cycle. Since we have used the normal mode, the DMA will only run once, and after the transfer is complete, it will stop. The DMA can be used in the situation, where the pulse needs to be changed very frequently. One of such examples are while using the addressable RGB LEDs. There is already a tutorial on it, you can find the link in the description. If you don't want to keep the pulse high in the end, you can send a zero in the end, to indicate the end of transfer or something like that. So we saw how to use PWM output, how to change the duty cycle and frequency, and how to use the DMA with PWM. This is it for this video. The next video will cover the PWM input, where we can measure pretty high frequencies. Later I will cover other functions of the timers. That's it for today. You can download the code form the link in the description. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.